Thanks for attending the webinar today. And my name is Hua Li, and I am the Scanning Probe Microscopy uh, Platform Leader at CMCA uh, here at University of Western Australia. So today, uh, I will show our recent progress on interfacial nanostructure and dynamics using the state-of-the-art uh, video rate AFM. So before I move to video rate high-speed AFM, I just want to use this opportunity to briefly introduce all of the instrument under the SPM platform at CMCA. So here uh, we have four instruments under this platform. So the first one is the VTAC confocal Raman AFM. So it combines the confocal Raman microscope uh, with AFM to perform both uh, chemical mapping and uh, 3D AFM imaging of an example. So for example, that uh, this is a hundred times optical image of the graphite particles. And uh, then we can easily switch to the AFM mode to see the morphology of a single graphite particle. And also we can move to the Raman mode to see the chemical information. So in this way, this is a very powerful instrument for both materials and the minerals study. And uh, we have another instrument called Hesogen TI-950 triple indenter. So this uh, instrument can be used uh, to measure the mechanical properties such as hardness, uh, elastic modulus, and the wear resistance of a variety of samples. For example, uh, here are the wear images of a series of polymer films. And we can measure the wear depth of these films and identify which film is better to resist wear. So this instrument is very useful for the materials study as well. And now we also have a KSI 5500 SPM. And this is a multifunctional system for both AFM and STM studies. It has been well developed to conduct a single molecule break junction measurement. Uh, for example, that it can achieve conductance via electrode displacement curves, which are very useful in molecular electronics research. And so I saw Emily and Stuart here. So they know more about uh, this uh, study than me. So if you are interested in, you can contact them as well. So the last one uh, I want to talk about today is uh, the Cypher uh, VRS high-speed video rate AFM, which is the focus of uh, this talk. So we achieved this uh, AFM about uh, one year and 10 months ago while an ARC LEAF project. And uh, this one, as far as we know, this is the only one of such type in the Southern Hemisphere. And uh, it can obtain high resolution Im images and measure dynamic processes, both in air and in situ down to the nanometer range. Uh, and also it can obtain forces between surfaces, both in air and in liquid as well. And also it can do nanoscale indentation so as to get the information such as uh, elasticity and hardness. Uh, so here is an example of the image captured by this AFM. We can see that the scale is a three nanometer by three nanometer. And uh, then uh, the system is uh, that it's a uh, uh, mica surface emerged in 100 millimolar potassium chloride aqueous solutions. So we could see that those uh, actually single ions pretty clearly, which matches with the mica lattice uh, pretty well. Uh, and uh, to be honest, uh, we can see that uh, there are some noises here. That is because instead of a static image, that is actually a video of that. Uh, so this means that we can uh, use this AFM to achieve high resolution videos down to the molecular level. So it's a pretty amazing. 
And uh, before I move to any more experimental data, I just uh, want to briefly introduce how AFM works. So different from optical and electron microscopes, uh, which use light or electrons to probe the surface, AFM uses its uh, cantilever to measure the surface. Uh, a laser point is put on the back of the cantilever to trace the deflection of the cantilever from which we can get the information of morphology as well as the interfacial forces. And uh, in the uh, traditional contact mode that the AFM cantilever contacts the surface all the time. So this leads to the damage of both the AFM tip and also the surface. That's recently, most of the morphology measurements are conducted using amplitude modulation mode. And uh, in this mode that the AFM cantilever is oscillated at or near its resonance frequency with the free amplitude. And as the cantilever moves close to the surface, we can see that uh, the interaction with the dampole reduces the oscillation amplitude. And uh, a side working amplitude, which is uh, lower than its free amplitude in the air, uh, is uh, 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 imposed to the cantilever to light the cantilever to move up and down to get the surface morphology. And also we can achieve other information such as elasticity. And um, this is achieved by a feedback loop that constantly readjusts the average tip to dampole's uh, distance. So that is how AFM works. Uh, however, uh, for conventional AFMs, uh, that it uh, usually just take more than three minutes to achieve a good image. So in this case, uh, these AFMs are not possible to study the dynamics at the interface. So for this uh, state-of-the-art cipher VRS AFM that can scan at up to 625 lines per second with high resolution. So this means uh, this AFM is uh, about 300 times faster than normal AFMs. Uh, so this is uh, achieved by using the uh, low, uh, ultra low noise sensors that in the scanner for accurate scanning and offsets. And also this uh, apply, AFM applies a small spot laser and a blue drive photothermal excitation that enable the use of the smallest, fattest and the lowest noise AFM probes uh, for the measurement. Therefore, it can conduct a video rate AFM imaging. So first, uh, let's see some slow speed. Uh, sorry, could I just, read, uh, yeah. Uh, could I just, for the, um, for the AFM video rate, do you use the same um, tips as you normally use or do the, the tips themselves have to be a bit different? Yeah, that's a good question. That is uh, what I just, talk about. So for this AFM, it has two modes. For the conventional mode, it uses uh, the same types as what we use for other AFMs. And for the high speed, it has the uh, ability to use very tiny tips, which wow. is about just uh, 10 micrometer in the lens uh, to measure the surface so as to reduce the noise and the oscillation. Yeah. Uh, so uh, first, uh, um, we just uh, want to see some normal but uh, uh, normal slow but high resolution images. So that is, uh, we first uh, use this AFM to directly visualize the ions in the stern line. So we know that when ions absorb from the bulk to the interface, it uh, usually forms double lines. So the surface bound line is called the stern line. Uh, on top, there are a few near surface diffusion layers. And if we are further away from the surface, that the uh, structure just uh, decays to the bulk structure. So this uh, stern line is uh, usually immobile relative to the surface and is uh, comprised of ions uh, charged oppositely to the surface. 
So actually, this stern line is uh, very important because, as we see, it almost exists in all the liquid interfaces. And it's important for charge storage and transfer for um, a variety of applications, such as batteries and supercapacitors, and also for other applications, such as electrode deposition, lubrication, and catalysis. So first, uh, let's see the morphology of stern line of uh, aqueous salt solution, calcium chloride on a surface gallium nitrate. Uh, so this project is uh, collaborated with Dr. Diana Wang and Professor Rob Atkin at UWA. So gallium nitrate is a uh, well, uh, very hard and mechanically stable semiconductor surface. And in air, it usually forms an amorphous oxidized layer on top of that. So our imaging is actually on top of this oxidized amorphous layer. So we know gallium nitrate has an isoelectric point of pH 5.5. Therefore, it is usually in neutral in DI water and negatively charged at pH 10. Uh, so uh, actually in DI water, we can see from this uh, AFM image that there is uh, no upwear structure, uh, which is uh, consistent to uh, uh, the amorphous um, uh, surface underneath of that. Uh, but uh, when uh, we immerse this surface to uh, the calcium chloride solution at pH 10, we can see that the salt as the salt concentration increases, the surface features change significantly, especially when the concentration is as high as 100 millimolar. Uh, we can see clear blobs, or actually those blobs are absorbed ions organized in a hexagonal crystal structure. So this is uh, quite interesting, but uh, unexpected uh, because uh, the surface is uh, amorphous. So why the salt ions pack in a crystal-like structure at an amorphous surface? And uh, so to be honest, so far we don't know clearly yet, but uh, it's, it's uh, likely because at uh, high surface charges at uh, pH 10, the surface is uh, highly negatively charged. So in this case, uh, there are more counter ions uh, stay in the stern line so as to overcharge the surface. And uh, thus the magnitude of lateral repulsions between the stern line cations is uh, greater than the cation and the surface attractions. Therefore, the ions um, tend to form a crystal-like structure to minimize uh, the repulsions between the stern line cations. And uh, uh, anyway, this result uh, clearly shows that the difference between the interfacial structure in water and the in salt solution. And uh, this uh, proves the uh, direct visualization of stern lines, ions at these uh, surfaces. And uh, so uh, from these uh, ion absorbed uh, stern line images, uh, we can further say that if we pick up three uh, two nanometer by two nanometer square areas in each of the uh, image, and then uh, from these areas, we can count those uh, ions. And uh, from uh, these identified ions, we can see uh, clearly that on a microscopic level that higher ion concentration causes more ion absorption because we can see definitely there are higher ion density on those uh, higher surfaces. And uh, uh, next, we move to a more concentrated electrolyte solution. So this is done by one of my PhD students, Justin Freeman, uh, in collaboration with Professor Rob Atkin. Uh, Justin is uh, going to graduate very soon and uh, join uh, the thermal fissure as a support engineer um, for SEMs in UQ next month. So you may see him around very soon. So 
in this project, uh, we use deep eutectic solvents as the uh, concentrated electrolyte. And DIS is a mixture of a hydrogen bond acceptor, which is uh, usually a salt, uh, and a hydrogen bond donor, which is uh, usually a, a mole molecular liquid uh, with a melting point significantly lower compared to the starting material. So a uh, famous uh, DES is uh, the choline chloride urea. Uh, so we can see that uh, when the melting point of the mixture uh, uh, drops by 100 degrees, uh, then the raw materials, when the molar ratio is uh, uh, one to two. So actually DES uh, has drawn great research attention because they have many desirable properties, uh, such as low vapor pressure, uh, tolerable properties, uh, high chemical and thermal stability, high ionic strength and uh, electrical conductivity. Also, this uh, uh, DES has wide electrical window and also the raw materials are relatively cheap and uh, environmentally friendly. Um, it's also easy to synthesize. So what we do is just uh, mix the uh, draw materials and uh, heat at 60 degrees and uh, stir a couple of hours and uh, they form this unique uh, solvent. So in this case, uh, DES is uh, very promising for electrochemistry applications. So in this study, um, we actually modified the AFM liquid cell so as to apply the potential between the solid substrate here that is uh, the graphite surface uh, and the platinum wear in the electrode, electrolyte. So from the obtained AFM images, we can see that at negative potentials, a four row superstructure has been detected. And at positive potentials, uh, we can see a superstructure of two row superstructure. And uh, this means that the stern line composition and structure are different at different uh, surface charges. So at uh, negative potentials, if we just uh, look at an area that has obvious structure as shown in this white box, we can see that this four row structure is composed of one urea in rich row with urea showing vertical orientation. And then the next two rows are composed of mixed choline and urea. And the next row is enriched just choline with a trans orientation. So the total ratio of uh, choline to urea in this uh, stern line is uh, one to 1.4. In this case, this means more choline cations enriched compared to the bulk liquid, which has a ratio of 1.1 to 2. So this is uh, uh, consistent with previous molecular simulation studies to say that at a negatively charged surface, the stern line is enriched in choline cations. And at positive potentials, we can see that uh, for the area we just uh, squared in right, uh, that the two row superstructure is composed of uh, mixed uh, urea and uh, chloride, and uh, the choline is uh, occasionally stay in this uh, structure. So actually in this case, the uh, choline to urea ratio is uh, one to seven, uh, which means more ions are existed at the interface at positive potentials, which match to the uh, molecular simulation uh, studies as well. So these uh, results clearly show that we can acquire highest resolution AFM images of stern line in both aqueous and more viscous uh, concentrated electrolyte solutions. And uh, from the results, we can obtain a uh, composition and uh, orientation of the uh, ions in the stern line. 
So this study actually provides a profound understanding of the interaction of electrolytes with electro uh, electrodes and thus enables the rational design of versatile and cost-effective uh, electrolytes for advanced uh, electrical devices, such as batteries and supercapacitors. So um, besides, yeah. But just ask, how stable are these layers? Um, how stable are these layers? Yeah. Or do it's, they change a lot as you're imaging them, or are they very stable? Uh, they are relatively stable mm -hmm. for a couple of uh, minutes, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, we also try to see some dynamics of these stern layers as well, so that is uh, uh, under investigation so far, mm -hmm. yeah. And how long does it take for you to take one scan? That depends, that's very good. So for this uh, static, um studies it usually takes more than one minute to get an image so so far we are developing methods to use the video rate mass uh, mode to visualize this as well in that case that take just one second but still it's uh, uh, not well developed yet so take some time yeah all right uh, so uh, what I just talked about is just those ions. And uh, uh, besides uh, this, that uh, this uh, video rate AFM can also be used to visualize uh, biomolecules such as uh, DNA and polymers. So here is an example done by the PhD student, uh, Nicholas Lawler in collaboration with Professor Iyer at UWA. And uh, this AFM image was captured in a buffer solution. So we can see clearly the shape of the DNA and the antibodies in this image and identify the ratio of the uh, bond and the free antibodies as well as to see the bonding size as well. So this study provides a feasible pathway to identify the bonding topology of DNA and the protein molecules in situ. And also this can be developed as a video rate ex experiment to see the dynamics of the interaction of DNA with proteins uh, in the future. So that is uh, what uh, we want to do next as well. Yeah. So um, now after we saw some high resolution static images, so let's see some video rate uh, imaging. So first, let's see a commonly, commonly seen system, the absorption of surfactant to a solid surface. So the surfactant here we use is a D-type, which is a cationic surfactant. That means the cations have long alkyl chains. And the surface we use is a mica, which is negatively charged in DI water. So in DI water that uh, the uh, cations tend to absorb to the surface and form a self-assembled layer. So here is the video. Uh, obviously uh, the absorption uh, process is very fast. Thus I just uh, extract a few key frames. So at the start, uh, what uh, we can see is uh, the surfactants are in the bulk uh, and uh, the surface is uh, just a bare surface with some uh, dust. And then at the time point labeled at zero seconds, the surfactants arrive at the surface and start to absorb at the interface. And after just one second, uh, there is a monolayer of surfactants. And after three seconds, uh, we can see those uh, muscles uh, form on the surface. So this study shows that uh, um, definitely we can trace the dynamics occurred at the interface. So next, we move to a more challenging system and uh, studied the interfacial dynamics of concentrated electrolytes. So here we use ionic liquids as the electrolytes. Uh, ionic liquids are pure salts with melting points below 100 de Celsius degrees. 
and they have many useful properties, uh, including excellent uh, electrical conductivity, good uh, electrical and thermal stability, low vapor pressure, and uh, tunable solubility and surface affinity. So because of their uh, useful properties, ionic liquids uh, have been used for many modern applications such as uh, electrolytes and uh, lubricants. And uh, in fact, uh, the um, useful properties of ionic liquids are mainly originated from their self-assembled nanostructures. Uh, for example, uh, for this um, uh, most uh, famous ionic liquid, which uh, has uh, been found as the first uh, ionic liquid in our history, is um, is ammonium nitrate, is ammonium nitrate EN. We can see that the charged groups, that is uh, the ions and the cation, um, high and uh, charged heads tend to aggregate uh, together to form the polar domains and uh, they repel the uh, polar groups that is the alkyl chains uh, which are self-assembled to the uh, polar domains. Uh, so the nanostructure of the ionic liquids in the bulk has been well uh, investigated using X-ray and the neutral scattering. So here is an example of the bulk structure of EN. Uh, we can see that EN forms a well-defined uh, sponge structure in the bulk. So actually at the uh, surface that uh, the nanostructure of uh, ionic liquids are always more flattened and uh, more pronounced at a solid surface. Uh, but uh, the dynamics of these uh, nanostructures at the surface have not been visualized in situ yet. So in this project, we use this uh, cipher VRS AFM to record the interfacial motion of uh, a pure EN as well as 90%, 75 uh, and 50% of EN water mixtures on a mica surface. So here is uh, an example of the AFM video taken uh, using this 90% uh, EN water system. So we use uh, this, uh, uh, we show this because this 90% EN mixture shows the most significant interfacial nanostructure. So for this video that we can see the scan size is just 10 nanometer by 10 nanometer. So it's very small. And the scan rate is one frame per second, uh, which is about 100 times faster than the conventional uh, AFM images. So they are relatively fast. And the other to show a longer period of the video, I just uh, speed up the playback rate to uh, 10 times. So from the video, we can see that uh, there are brighter and darker domains uh, constantly moving on the surface, but the uh, movement is uh, relatively slow. Uh, so actually these uh, uh, brighter parts are correlate to the polar domains in the bulk, which are composed of the charged groups. Uh, therefore, they are relatively rigid and uh, difficult uh, to comprise and thus shows a brighter color. And the darker domains are correlate with the upolar domains in the bulk, which are composed of flexible alkyl chains. Uh, therefore, they are relatively easier to comprise and thus shows a darker color in these uh, videos. And um, uh, in order to trace the movement of these domains, so first uh, we just focus on uh, some obvious polar domains, and uh, then uh, we can uh, we can see these um, polar domains and using software such as imaging to trace the movement of these polar domains. 
and uh, from this direct uh, tracking that uh, we can achieve the diffusion coefficient uh, using this equation, uh, where MSD is the mean square displacement that can be directly achieved from this uh, direct tracking, and uh, N is the uh, dimensionality. So because we think at the interface that the uh, domains just uh, move in plane, so n equals to two, and uh, the delta t is the data acquisition time interval. So here is uh, just uh, one second. So from this equation, the calculated diffusion coefficient is uh, 1.5 uh, nanometer square per second. Uh, so this is a very small number. And then next, uh, actually, we adapt uh, another method, which is called uh, differential dynamic microscopy uh, to analyze uh, the data. Uh, so compared to direct uh, tracking, DDM has uh, uh, advantages, such as it can analyze the entire video uh, so as to attract uh, the diffusion coefficient. Therefore, it is sensitive to not only the uh, bright polar domains, but also the dark uh, polar domains. And uh, for this method that DDM uses the uh, 2D Fourier analysis of the sequential AFM video frames. Uh, so here is uh, a flow chart of how DDM works. So firstly, uh, the images are computed to get the image difference, which is the change in intensity of each pixel between two frames separated by a time interval. So in this case, the errors and the noise related to the background can be removed. And uh, the obtained differential images are 2D Fourier transformed so as to compute it and uh, average to achieve image uh, structure function as a different uh, wave vector Q. Uh, this image structure function can be plotted as a function of a time interval um, for a wide range of uh, uh, wave factor Q to trace the dynamics of features in a wide range. So in this case, the influence of time and the state space uh, is uh, decoupled. So from actually from this curve fitting that we can get another parameter which is called the relaxation rate. And uh, then if we consider that these uh, uh, features diffuse randomly at the interface, just uh, they just do Brownian um, motion. So in this case, we can extract the diffusion coefficient from the slope of uh, this um, um, relaxation rate whereas this uh, Q square. So uh, that's how we extract track uh, this diffusion coefficient using DDM. Actually, this DDM is relatively, relatively complicated and not straightforward. So if you want to know more details, uh, we can discuss about it after the talk. Uh, so uh, from these uh, two methods, the uh, direct tracking and the DDM, we can see that the obtained diffusion coefficient values are relatively consistent uh, with this, each other uh, for all the systems we investigated. Uh, however, strikingly, uh, what we found is that the obtained diffusion coefficient is uh, nine orders uh, uh, of magnitude smaller than the bulk values estimated from the conventional einstein stokes equation uh, shown here. So why this happens? That is uh, likely because uh, uh, the AFM videos uh, record actually is the near surface uh, structures, uh, which are just uh, uh, lie above the stern line, which has a strong uh, interaction with the uh, underneath stern line. So now we know that uh, the microsurface is generally negatively charged in this uh, liquid. And uh, thus the stern line is enriched in cations with uh, the charged groups towards the microsurface and the alkyl chains towards the near surface layers above. 
Uh, so in this case, uh, this anchors the upper domains to the stern line. And uh, uh, the cation charged groups uh, we know are covalently attached to the alkyl uh, uh, chains and the anions are electrostatically attached to cation charged groups. And thus, in this case, both the polar and the upolar domains of the near surface structure um, interact very strongly to the uh, relatively immobile uh, stern line, and uh, thus um, they extreme extreme very slowly, as what we recorded using the video rate AFM. And uh, actually, instead of being a, a freely flow liquid, the uh, polar domains are better conceived as the upper half of a surface bound aggregate with the lower half uh, to be the stern line cations, which is uh, similar to the surface absorbed aqueous surfactant muscles that has been uh, studied well using AFM and other spectroscopies. Uh, so um, we know that um, uh, viscosity decreases uh, with water concentration for these uh, water mixtures. And uh, according to the einstein stokes equation that uh, uh, lower viscosity should lead to higher diffusion coefficient. Uh, however, from our studies, uh, we can see that this 90% uh, EN water uh, system, although has uh, lower viscosity, it shows even lower diffusion uh, coefficient compared to pure EN. And this means that the bulk properties such as um, bulk viscosity cannot be directly used to predict interfacial dynamics. And uh, here, this 90% uh, EN shows slow layer uh, interfacial dynamics likely due to a small amount of water that enhance the sulfophobic segregation of alcohol chains, therefore increases the uh, interactions between the near surface structure and the, the underneath stern line and thus uh, slow down the diffusion. Uh, however, uh, at a higher water contents, uh, we can see the reduction in viscosity dominates the sulfophobic enhancement and uh, thus leads to higher diffusion coefficient uh, in these systems. So this new but unexpected fundamental understanding regarding this ionic liquid self-assembled near surface nanostructures and uh, their dynamics uh, will impact upon uh, widespread applications that involve solid liquid interfaces, such as uh, electrolytes, catalysts, and uh, lubricants. So that's all what I want to talk uh, about today. So to conclude, uh, this state-of-the-art video rate AFM have shown the great capacity to investigate solid liquid interfaces uh, down to the molecular level, even at video rate. So here I want to use this opportunity to attract uh, potential collaborations. Uh, for example, that uh, this is an uh, AFM radio, not done by me, but done by the scientists uh, uh, from the asylum research that for uh, develop, who develop this instrument. And uh, we can uh, see that uh, uh, and they can use this instrument to study the self assemble uh, of uh, collagen fibrins. And uh, definitely we can do similar studies. And also this instrument can be potentially used to investigate the growth of uh, crystals in situ, uh, trace the formation of electrochemistry products in situ, and the dynamic interactions such as the DNA with polymers, as I just mentioned. Um, so uh, if you are interested and want to uh, discuss potential projects with me, please uh, uh, send me an email using either of the following uh, email addresses. So finally, I want to show my great thanks to Martin and all CMC staff, and also 
uh, my long-term collaborator and mentor, Rob, who helps to acquire the instrument and uh, supervise the projects. And also my collaborators and uh, uh, ARC and uh, Microscopy Australia as well. Uh, thanks. And uh, last but not uh, least, I think all of you have already uh, noticed this conference, but uh, I want to say if you want, you are interested in this conference and welcome to submit a project, uh, an abstract and welcome to Perth early next year. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you. Well, that was excellent. That was really great. Um, Martin would have killed you if you didn't put up that final slide, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I just wanted to ask, with that previous study, did you look at different um, temperatures? Is um, there a to look at different temperatures? Um, yeah, that is a good question. So for this uh, uh, AFM, that for the normal load, the mm. slow speed mode, we can apply uh, temperature difference to mm. this system. So we studied that, like uh, how ions forms as the interface. But for the high speed mode, uh, so far it's not developed yet for the temperature control. Uh, mm. But as the uh, engineers, uh, uh, from asylum are uh, now focused on this and uh, try to um, do something to solve this problem. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so I think there's a question from Emily. Yeah. Sorry, my camera's not working and I have no idea um, why. Uh, <laughs> also, yes, the conference, anyone with SPM and surface science, I'm running a campaign to get more SPM and surface science involved in ACMM. So please come along and present. Um, you showed that image of the uh, ions sitting above the stern layer and said that those were what you were actually looking at. And that was why you got this uh, massive increase that you didn't expect. Um, what effects do you think the charge of the tip has on interacting with these ions? That is a good question, but uh, uh, so far we don't think the charges on the tip have a significant effect on that. And yeah, we haven't seen clear um, evidence on that, uh, but for some other slow speed studies, um, in some systems, uh, we definitely see the uh, charge of the tips on that. That also depends on uh, which type of tips we use as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, how long do you have to scan to sort of temperature settle the instrument before you're able to start capturing images? Yeah, that is uh, also a good question. So for the slow speed images, as there is a well-defined um, temperature control, so it's uh, very easy. So usually, I think uh, one to two minutes that can- Oh, that's really fast. Yeah, that's really fast. And uh, for the high speed one, because we don't have temperature control, so usually it uh, takes um, at the start of the experiment, it usually takes um, maybe five to 10 uh, minutes to stabilize. But if we leave the instrument overnight, overnight that usually um, very fast. So below three minutes. Yeah. It's still, I mean, even five to 10 minutes is a lot faster than STM, which yeah. was the previous atomic rest method. And you sit there yeah. for hours. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Great, thanks, Emily. Um, are there any other questions for what? Uh, I have a question, if possible. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, yeah. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, first, great presentation, uh, very interesting. Um, I'm just wondering, with the video rate AFM or high speed scanning, yeah. is that possible uh, with other AFM techniques such as Kelvin probe, magnetic force uh, imaging, conductive measurements? stuff like that? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. But so far for the high speed uh, imaging, it's only adapted to the um, uh, 
imaging without any other properties. We can get the face images at the same time as well. Yeah, but for others like uh, uh, Kelvin probing, no, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. Uh, and the second question is just, um, is it possible to do video rate AFM on samples that are a little bit more rough? For example, textured silicon, uh, where we have to scan fairly large areas, maybe 50 to 60 microns with a large IMS, maybe a more IMS, IMS value more than 100 nanometers. So fairly rough samples, is that possible? Uh, so far, I don't think it's uh, uh, possible. So uh, the scan range, uh, the largest uh, scan range we can get for the VRS is uh, uh, 20 micrometer by 20 micrometer. And also for the height, it should be, uh, I think, uh, below um, 100, 100 nanometer usually. At okay. least, uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. No worries. Okay, thanks, Yin. Um, are there any other questions for what? It doesn't look like. Um, so that was a absolutely beautiful um, presentation. That was fantastic. Thanks. So um, very much appreciate and that will all be put up online as well if people want to look at later or they couldn't join today. Um, so thanks a lot and look forward to seeing you in Perth um, along with everyone else. Um, so thanks a lot. Thanks, Mark. Yes, thank you, Richard. Thank you, everyone.